<clears throat> All right, so it's come to my attention that there's no clear guide on how to position things in CSS online, right? Like I've dug around everywhere and I found a couple, but I haven't found any that really go in depth all the way and explain it uh, the way that it needs to be explained. So that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing in this video. All right, so uh, first off, before I start, um, the, if you stay all the way till the end of this video, I'm gonna give you guys a bunch of free stuff that I think everyone that's watching this video can benefit from, so stay till the end. All right, and then one more thing, uh, for the text editor that I'm gonna be using in this tutorial, it's called JSBin. Um, now this is completely online. You don't have to install anything to use it. Uh, if you're interested, just head over to JSBin.com. Um, now if you are interested in using like a real text editor, and you are serious about making websites and whatnot, I would recommend investing in a uh, good text editor. Uh, I recommend using Note tab if you're on Windows, there's a link to it in the description. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I already populated my HTML document with all the basic HTML tags that you need uh, to get started with. And so let's go ahead and open up our CSS tab over here and start. So. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some stuff in the body tags that would allow me uh, to show you what HTML I'm going to work with. All right, so the first thing I'm going to put in the body tag is I'm going to go ahead and put a div. All right, and I'll actually just copy and paste it for my notes over here. I'm going to go ahead and put a div, and I'm going to call the first one a main element and the other one an other element. Right, so. I have a class, I'm gonna make a class for main, that's gonna be called main element, and then my other div is gonna be um, a class that says element, or that, that that's uh, that's gonna be other, that's gonna be called other element. All right, so, and actually I need to go ahead and close uh, this other div that I made down here. All right, so as you can see, this is the output, nothing special is happening yet, all right? So now uh, I'm gonna import my CSS stuff and I'm gonna basically show you what you can do with the position attribute, right? So, or the position uh, property. So as you can see over here, I uh, have populated my class main with a two pixel uh, solid border, right? With like this blue kind of color. And actually I just, I don't like all this fancy stuff. I'll just make it blue. All right, the color is white. Uh, actually, that was it's better if we keep it black, if I can spell correctly today. All right, there we go. So, uh, and my padding is 20 pixels. All right, so there's 20 pixels of space. And then for my other element that I created, uh, I did a one pixel. Actually, I'm going to do two pixels so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, two pixel dashed border, that's black. And then I did background color padding. Uh, again, so 20 pixels, same amount over here. And I added a uh, kind of like a... Uh, Actually, let's change this to red. All right, so I'm gonna make this text red so it stands out a little bit more. All right, awesome. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the uh, position property. So what the position property does is it can basically help you manipulate the location of an element. So for example, if I was gonna type position relative and I uh, typed top 20 or actually, let's go ahead and do 50 pixels. Uh, what's going to happen is relative to its original position, where the, uh, the element above will now be nudged down from the top by 50 pixels. Okay, so basically now, as you can see, it's moved 50 pixels uh, relative to the position that it was at uh, from the beginning, right? So relative is only one of the six values for the position property. Uh, I'm going to talk about the others in just a second, but it's important to note that position uh, relative can be used to basically manipulate uh, elements wherever you'd like to place them. Okay, that's the whole point of this property. So the other six or the other five values uh, are going to be inherent. So the position value doesn't cascade and uh, this can be basically used to specifically force it to and inherit the position from its uh, for value from its parent. And I'll be going over all of these again if you don't understand uh, right now. So don't don't get too overwhelmed. Uh, the next one is going to be sticky, and the element is treated like a relative value until the scroll location of the viewport reaches reaches a uh, specified threshold. And then. Um, there's also fixed where the element is removed from the flow of the document, like absolutely positioned elements. 
All right, and then there's absolute where the element is removed from the flow of the document and the other elements will behave as if it's not even there. All right, while all the other positional properties are still working on it. And then there's relative, which I, we just talked about, which is in elements original position. Um, but now you can move it left, right, top, bottom, right? And then there's also static, uh, which every element has a static position by default. So basically, if we take away uh, this right here, this is static. Um, so if, if you set like, a, for example, if I was to uh, go back and set a uh, position static, right, and I still added a top uh, property right here, it wouldn't do anything because uh, it's gonna stay, stay, it's gonna stay still, right? So now let me go ahead and demonstrate uh, all of these values, or uh, yeah, all of these values that this property has, okay? So the first one I'm gonna do is absolute. So if you type in absolute, uh, for this value right here, you're going to notice that it'll behave as if uh, the child element isn't there at all. So the child element is this other element. I'll just call it other element. Uh, basically, if you use the absolute value, then the parent element, which is this main element right here, it'll behave as if the other element isn't there at all. Right. And then when we try to set other values, such as like right or left. So if I do right and then I do 50 pixels, um, We'll find that the like we'll find that the other element is responding to its dimensions of its parent, but uh, the the actual parent doesn't move. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, the fixed position. Okay, so fixed is kind of similar to absolute because it can help you position the element anywhere relative to the document, but its value is unaffected by scrolling. All right, so to demonstrate this, I went ahead and I added a bunch of line breaks uh, with the word high uh, to take up a bunch of space so that I have a scrolling bar. But basically, as you can see, if I go ahead and I add position and I go ahead and do fixed like so, uh, what will happen is when I scroll, it'll basically stay in the same spot while all my other stuff uh, is moving. Okay, so you could do this with a navigation bar uh, for example, if you want to stay at the top while all your other content is scrolling by, you can do this with images and whatever else you like. It's super, super versatile. Okay. Uh, the last uh, value that I wanted to talk about was the sticky value. So uh, the sticky value is still in production as of making this video, but it basically allows you to position an element relative to anything on the document. And then once a user has scrolled past a certain point, uh, in the viewport, so in their browser, uh, the location will remain. So for example, uh, let's say I pretended uh, that, okay, so let's say that I scrolled all the way down past these highs and there is another menu bar, it would basically stay up here at the top after I kept scrolling. So uh, to show you exactly what I mean, I've actually found a code pen that uses uh, the sticky value. And if I go ahead and show you, there are two navigation bars, right? There's the first one that says product services contact, and then there's another one that says hoses, rakes, and shovels, right? So if you're scrolling down, it's fine. Uh, the navigation, the first one isn't sticky, but as soon as you hit the second navigation bar, it just sticks to the top of the page and everything, uh, or the navigation bar sticks to the top of the page and everything just scrolls up past it. All right. So this is a basic uh, guide on how to position elements in uh, CSS. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as I mentioned, I would give you guys a bunch of free stuff at the end. So uh, now is the now is when I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a free three part mini course that's going to teach you the um, how to start off with HTML, CSS and JavaScript, as well as how they all work together. Uh, it's some really, really, really helpful stuff. I think it'll benefit anybody watching this video. If you're interested, just go ahead and check out the link in the description. It'll take you straight to a playlist that I made here on YouTube. And I'm also, uh, I also wanted to give you guys a free ebook that I wrote. I normally charge $25 for it, but since you're part of the CodeSpan community, I'm going to give it to you guys completely 100% for free. Um, what it is, is it's an ebook on how you can get started with uh, web development. Um, and basically learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I put a bunch of basics, bunch of fundamentals in it. it has everything you need to know uh, to, to, to learn the fundamentals of all three of those languages. And I'm also gonna be giving you guys a free cheat sheet, completely 100% for free, um, 
that teaches you guys how to learn any programming language as fast as humanly possible. So if you're interested in any of the things I, com I mentioned uh, in, you know, in the past few minutes, then just go ahead and check out the description. It's completely free. And I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.